Good afternoon, folks, and thank you all for coming out to tonight's webinar. We are going to switch gears from doing our PCB with 1-2-3-D circuits, and we're going to start using Inkscape. Um, Inkscape being a vector graphics software. So if you recall from a couple weeks ago, with when we used Tinkercad, we imported vector graphics into Tinkercad. Um, we're going to be... Um, making raster images into vector graphics so we could in theory put it in a Tinkercad if we wanted to. Now it is a little bit complicated to install um, to install Inkscape if you're on a Mac. So PC users got it easy but if you're on a Mac um, you're gonna have to jump through some hoops you'll have to do some restarting of your computer so hopefully um, it'll go pretty simply for you. If you are on Edmodo, Mr. Dubik did post these slides free to download. So if you are watching this video after I'm doing this class, you'll want to use that as a reference. Um, so what I what we're doing first is uh, where did I put it? We're going to inkscape.org/n/download, and real quick, I'm going to put it in my notepad. And make it real big, so if you need to see it, you'll have a little bit easier of a time. Oops. So we're going to this page right here. We're going to scroll down. If you're on a Windows PC, underneath Windows, you'll see 32 and 64-bit. You're more than likely 64-bit if you're on a computer from after like 2013 you want to, in to click on the installer MSI and go through the steps that it takes you through there if you're on a Mac though you're gonna have to go through some effort um, it depends on which version of Mac OS X that you have 10.7 um, to 10.10 .10, you're going to download this first file 10.5 and 10.6 you're going to download the second file Anything before that, you're out of luck. You'll need to find either update year, um, OS, or find a different way to do this. Now, if you have a Mac, you'll notice that after the uh, .dmg file, it'll say requires Xquartz. If you click on that, um, it will take you to Xquartz's site. You'll want to click on the download, install it, and it will prompt you to restart your computer. So um, go ahead and do that, and then you can install and hopefully run Inkscape. So to those of you that are here now, did you both get Inkscape installed? And if you have gotten both or have gotten everything installed, please go ahead and open it. I just want to see if there are any issues uh, with getting the uh, the download all nice and good and finished and stuff. <laughs> Give me all just a moment to open her on up. All right, so if you're on a Mac and you're having trouble getting this thing to open up, um, what you will probably need to do, if you can right click, there should be an option. I'm trying to think of how exactly this works. I'm not a Mac person. Um, but basically what you need to do is open Inkscape through Xquartz. Xquartz will have installed in your utilities applications and then utilities directory. So I think if what you do is open up Xquartz, you should be able to open up Inkscape within Xquartz. So give that a try. Open up Xquartz. It is open. All right, this is the easiest troubleshooting session ever. I like this. <laughs> I wish every installation day could uh, go this simply. 
Um, and let me tell anybody that is watching the video after class, you might have some trouble with this. It's normally it takes a good half hour to to do this with everybody asking questions and having trouble and stuff like that. So this is a, a record. <laughs> But it also means for you folks that are here, I won't, I'll probably be ending class a little bit early because I do try to keep my classes aligned. So is that okay with you? Because it's gonna be. <laughs> but okay, good. So y'all got it working, and if you are watching this afterwards and you cannot get this open, please email me. at this email and we can set up a time to go over getting this on your computer successfully. So cool, cool. Before I actually talk about Inkscape, I'm going to go over vector graphics. We did go over this when we did Tinkercad, so this is going to be a very quick review. I'm not trying to bore y'all. <laughs> so actually, before I do this, do either of y'all remember anything about vector graphics? I know we spent maybe 10 minutes out of all the classes we've done. Either of you have any recollection on what they are? It's okay if not. I don't expect you to. Ooh. Ooh -hoo. Good one. So vector graphics can be um, saved in a .svg file. So that's going to be the file type. And if you do have a vector graphic image, that is the file type .svg that you would import into Tinkercad. So, do you remember anything else special about vector graphics? Because that was a good one. All right, and I think you'll find the what the stuff I'm about to go over to be pretty familiar, because it's literally the exact same portion of presentation. Ooh, not raster. That is a good one. That is another good one. I'll explain what raster means in just a second here. So, you remember more than I give you credit for. I, I give you all props for that. So, all right. Inkscape is a software that allows you to draw and edit vector graphics. It is free, it is open source, as opposed to other software such as Adobe Illustrator, um, which means that we're going to use it for this class. Life is grand, we like free stuff, and um, we're going to learn with it, so good deal. Unless you have like a couple hundred or thousand dollars to pay for a license for Illustrator, but I doubt you just want to throw that away when you have this nice free software. So vector graphics, if you remember, are the representation of images based on mathematical expressions. They're based on vectors. So a vector is a, um, it starts at a certain point and has a certain direction and length. So it starts at a point which, call, which we call a node and the direction and length vector is called a path. So basically we start somewhere and we have a line that goes so many units in some direction and we just have a whole bunch of those which makes one single vector graphic. So you all are probably familiar already with other, t other types of image files like JPEG, GIFs, um, bitmap. These are just made of a grid of pixels which is also known as a raster format. So when I say a grid of pixels, I mean just one pixel is blue, one pixel is red. And uh, I'll show you what more into depth about that in a second. Um, but vector graphics are comp comprised of these paths defined by their start and their endpoints um, with some other points, some curves, and angles along the way. Now vector graphics uh, take advantage of um, you, of stacking primitives, basically, which means um, I went a little bit ahead of myself there. All right, v 
vector graphics can be broken into primitives. So that's just simple geometric shapes like lines, points, curves, polygons, which you sort of stack on top of each other to represent these larger, uh, more complex shapes or diagrams. So if we have a, uh, this image of a lion here, you see this grid. We take one of these cells here. Notice that by stacking four different layers of four different colors, we can get one straight up image of um, the nose of this uh, lion. So we will see that as we get further into Inkscape. What exactly that means, how it makes your image look different, yada, yada, yada. So as Matteo said, vector graphics are not raster graphics, and this is the big difference between the two. Unlike other graphics, which will look blocky or pixelated when you scale it up, so when you make it bigger, it might look blocky like this, vector graphics can be resized without losing image quality. So if we pretend that this weird ice cream soda is a vector graphic and we magnify it, it's going to look nice and sharp. So it's going to look sharp because um, the edges aren't a certain number of dots. They're not a defined number of dots, but they are a series of defined related curves. So it doesn't matter how big or how small that the image is. It's still going to have the same relationships between um, objects. Now, as you see here with, with bitmap, all we're doing is making one single pixel bigger, which makes this weird blocky look here. So we did not play around to scratch with this. But here's another example of, of a raster versus vector. So much cleaner on this side here as opposed to this over here. I also don't know why this cat has a mole on its face. All right, my real life cat is now stepping on my keyboard. Please leave. Okay, there we go. So vector graphics are used a lot for logos um, because, or, because they can be either really big or really small. Um, they also take up less space in terms of file size as a bitmap or a raster or whatever you want to call it. So they're used in animations a lot. So again, we already went over all of this. So again, I will just scroll very slowly through this. So if you need to see it again on the video, you can pause it. And again, this is the link to the download page here. So I play some nice elevator music in your head while you wait and watch this for Mac XCorch. Install XCorch. Restart your computer. Install Inkscape, and you'll need to associate Inkscape with XCorts. Um, you can also start up XCorts first and then start up Inkscape to get it to work. So, again, if you're having trouble, email me. So, it might take a couple minutes for it to start up the first time, and in fact, when I started my Inkscape up, Inkscape up a second ago, it also took. Um, a couple minutes to load even though I've had it on my computer for like a year now. So I don't know, I, I guess it's just the software. It is very powerful for what it is um, and you will see that as we start using it. So again, XCorts is going to be the top level. Inkscape is running within it. Um, so if you really, really want to if, and you're on XCorts, if you want to um, set your preferences to be the preferences that we'll be using, that I guess are by default on a Windows, within XCorts, if you click on X11 in the top left corner and then go down to Preferences, you want to make sure that you've got these items checked. So under the Input tab in the pop-up window that will appear, you want to enable key equivalents under X11 and option keys send alt L and alt R. Underneath the pasteboard tab you'll want to enable syncing and update clipboard when pasteboard changes. Sorry, clipboard was caps locked and so I felt the need to say it a little bit more vigorously. So, all right, 
let's learn a little bit about navigating this guy here. Um, to pan your screen, so in this case it's just going to be scrolling up and down. Let's see if I can resize this to be the size of my window here. And what am I doing? Okay, there we go. Um, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can just scroll up and down. Um, otherwise, you can just use the nice handy dandy uh, which McCall bar here on the side. What this is that I'm showing you, oops, wrong way. Sometimes it acts really finicky and does not want to work for me. <laughs> I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And you can zoom in and out also by clicking the, or by pressing the uh, minus and plus keys on your keyboard. It should be directly to the left of backspace. What you see here on the sheet of paper, though, this is going to be actually where you're going to do your work. So depending on um, how finely detailed your work is going to be, you might want to get closer or farther away. But you will want to include everything that you are doing on this piece of paper, um, else you're not going to have a very good time. <laughs> so let's see. Um, so up and down is the scroll wheel. I guess you can go left and right by clicking shift and then the scroll wheel. And similarly with zooming, you can hit uh, positive or plus or minus on the keyboard or hold control while you use your scroll wheel. Okay. So give that a second. Do -do -do -do. Try that. Hopefully it's not too crazily difficult. Um, and let's talk about the basics then. You should all see on the left hand side a menu that looks like this. Does everybody have that? Anybody not have that? Please tell me if you don't. Give me one second. My cat is tearing up paper. All right, you do not see that, okay. So how did I do this last time around here? Because I do not remember how I did this last year. <laughs> it's probably gonna be somewhere in editor view, so. It's not under view, it doesn't look like. Oh, I think this is it. So if you go to edit, and all the way at the bottom of this menu should be preferences. I believe if you have, let's see, let's double check this here. Well, that helps a little bit in having it bigger. <laughs> That's somewhere in here. Selector is actually going to be on the bottom. So if you don't have um, this toolbox on the left hand side, you, you'll need to go to View, Show, Hide, and make sure the toolbox is selected. Did you get it working? You see it, maybe? You're missing four things in the toolbox, and that's okay, because I figured out that other part out already. If you're missing stuff in the toolbox, well, let me double check that this is right.
which things are you missing on here? I know you're not going to know the name of it, but... Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. The bottom four. Colors from image. You will, I do not think we're going to be using those four. If for some reason we do use these four, I can help you get those four things prepared. But I can tell you for sure we're not going to be using it during this class. Maybe next class, and if that's the case, I will explain. I'll do some research over the weekend to figure that out. So, very weird. I wonder why it's not showing up. Maybe it's just the difference in the Mac and the PC version. So, as long as you see everything else, we should be good to go. So, any questions on what we've done so far? which has literally just been installation, a review of vector graphics, and making sure that we have everything displayed correctly. All right. So we're actually, like I said, doing really, really good time-wise since it didn't take forever like it did last year. So good, good. Mm. So let's take a look at the left-hand side menu here, the toolbox, which I just had you all open. The, what is it, the first? Uh, the first option you got here is the select and transform objects. You'll generally want to make sure that you have the selector tool selected. Um, when you're doing just about anything, you'll notice that if you don't have the selector tool selected, that um, you're mouse cursor will look a little bit different and you probably won't be able to do much stuff depending on what you're trying to do so whenever you're doing whenever you're finished with the tool I do suggest you um, click the select tool so that you're not like why isn't this working because ah! I even do it all the time I get really confused we'll talk about the edit paths by nodes when we actually start talking about vector graphics um, the one below that, the tweak objects by sculpting or painting. Does, does this ring any bells? This, the idea of sculpting something? Any, anybody find this familiar with another software we used? Because we use a similar tool in three dimensions with um, Mesh Mixer. So it's going to be the same thing just in two dimensions because this is a flat surface that we're working on. It's basically like a, um, a canvas. So underneath that we got zoom in and out. I think y'all know what that is. And below that we got the measurement tool. It behaves very similarly to the ruler in uh, Tinkercad. It literally just measures. Nothing crazy there. So here's where we get to the tool, or yeah, to the shape makers, which is what we are going to be using. So we got rectangles and squares. I guess we do have 3D boxes, but it's only sort of 3D. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, circles, ellipses, stars, and polygons, and spirals, because who doesn't love a good spiral? So let's start with the rectangle tool. Um, it is nothing crazy. It's exactly how you'd expect it to work say in like MS Paint or other softwares you may use. Um, if you go ahead and click on rectangle, I want you to click and drag, make yourself a rectangle. It's just like you did in all sorts of other softwares before. This seems to be a more graphically based semester using a lot of drawing tools, which is interesting. I didn't realize that until just right now. So just click and drag, um, but something that you'll notice when you have the rectangle tool um, selected and you have just drawn a rectangle, on the lower left-hand side, 
And you might even see it on the upper right hand side if you have all the boxes like I do checked. But everyone should see on the lower left hand side, and if you don't, stop me. Two bars. One will say fill and one will say stroke. Does everyone see that? So if you draw a rectangle, and I think this goes for any other shape as well, while it's still selected, and you can tell it's selected by the dotted line and the weird little dots in the corners, you can pick any color off of this color palette, and I think you can even pick more colors than that. Um, any color on that color palette, if you click it, it's going to change that color. Well, it was working earlier. Ah, there's my problem. Let me restart that, sorry. If you have your <laughs> rectangle or any other shape selected, what you should be seeing on the right hand side of your screen is a box that'll pop up that should say fill and stroke. Anyone see that? If you're not seeing it, you can probably find it the same way we found um, the toolbox by going to view and then, what was it? View and then show or hide. Whoops. So notice that there are three different tabs. And let me actually go to my notes to see what I'm talking about. There should be three different tabs on the left hand side. It'll say fill, stroke paint, and stroke style. Everyone see that? If not, let me know so I can help you out. On, if you click onto the fill tab, from here, you are able to choose what color you would like to change your the fill of your box to. The fill being the almost the entire basic color. The stroke, as you'll see in a second, is the outline. But just straight fill. You can change your color in a couple different places. Underneath it you'll see flat color. You can change your RGB values as well as your opacity, so how see-through it is. You can do it here, or you can pick from colors. Well, I did earlier. Ignore that. Just use this. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working, even though it did for me earlier. Probably just because I'm being watched, and of course it messes up when I'm being watched. <laughs> So similarly, if you want to change the outline, you go to the next tab on the um, next to fill, which is stroke paint, and you can pick a whole bunch of different colors from here. So I don't even know what color I'm doing right now. It's like a weird beigey purple color. It's, it's hard to see because the colors I chose are really similar. Um, I should probably fix that, actually. I can't live with myself like that. <laughs> I probably shouldn't choose white, should I? I absolutely should not. <laughs> and so, see, now I have a black background, or a black uh, outline here. So you won't need to worry about stroke style, necessarily. Um, stroke style will make your outline thicker or thinner. So, I increase the width, bam, outline is thicker. So this stuff isn't terribly interesting yet, and I understand that. Once we start talking, though, about, um, about converting these vector graphics, or, in, sorry, the raster graphics into vector graphics, it will get a little bit more interesting. 
Um, basically what we see so far is just a fancy version of MS Paint or GIMP or whatever um, paint software you typically have used in the past. So any questions on that? So again, fill is going to be the entire color of your shape. Stroke is going to be your outline. I don't know why they call it stroke. That sounds weird. So notice that if you pick the circle tool, you can create a circle or an ellipse or an arc. But for now, let's just keep it a good old circle. Notice again that the fill and stroke option will appear to you again, so that, again, I don't know why that's not working. It'll appear again, so you can do the same thing that you did with these boxes up here. So I don't think that's anything too crazy either. You can also, with the options below that, choose a star or a spiral. Um, I don't feel like I need to go over that too far into depth. It's pretty self-explanatory. So the last topic I'm going to go over today, and again, I know it's early. Again, I don't want to get too far ahead of the other class. Last thing we'll go over is our selector tool, which is that very first tool that I talked about. It does exactly what it sounds like it will do. It will select, but it will also transform objects, and that's really what we're going to be focusing on for the last bit of class here. So again, the selector tool. And one thing, to note, if I haven't told you yet, I don't think I have, is if your mouse cursor is different, say because you were drawing something, all you got to do is right click or click um, somewhere out of the canvas or drawing area to escape that tool. I think you can also hit the escape key on your keyboard. Um, even though I said that you can only draw on the canvas here, I think technically if you wanted to try, I think you can actually draw on the blank space. It is still part of the drawing space, so that's why you can't just click out here to um, escape whatever tool you're using. I have the preferences open, no wonder it's being weird. Derp, there we go. We're going to make sure that we have the selector tool selected. So the select tool is pretty cool because you can select an object and change attributes such as color and um, stroke and size and shape. So you'll be using that soon. Hooray! All right. So I've already sort of talked about the fill and stroke. I don't know why they went over the twice in this PowerPoint. It's a little bit weird. So again, just showing you the fill and stroke tabs that'll pop up on the right-hand side. Um, I didn't say this before, but this very bottom opacity, make sure that it is not completely opaque, which means like clear. You want it to be all the way on the right-hand side, so 255, so that it actually is a color and not just clear.
So where I was trying to go with this was transformations. So changing the size, um, moving your object, scaling it, rotating it, yada, yada, yada. So if you want to move a shape, make sure you got the selector tool selected. What is happening to my thing right now? Oh, is it frozen? No, it's not frozen. Ah, I have the preferences up. All right, there we go. Make sure you have the selector tool selected. You should see four arrows pointing away from each other. Oh, come on. So many times this semester this has happened. It was just working a second ago. Alright, make sure you have the selector tool selected. It should just look like your mouse cursor, but if you hover it over one of the objects you created, you'll notice the four arrows. If you click on it, the object once, you'll see a whole bunch of more arrows pop up. Yay, we love arrows here. So y'all are some pretty smart folk. If you want to change the size of this stuff, all you got to do is click on one of the arrows and you can resize it in whichever direction the arrow is pointing. Ooh. If you wanted to resize it, but keep the same scale, so let's pretend here that the length is twice the width. You would hold down the control key on your keyboard. It'll keep the same scale, but will let you resize it. So I'll give you just a second to do that. Make sure that on the right page here. I've already, I guess I skipped move, but moving is the simplest part. Just clicking and dragging your whole object. Clicking and dragging the arrows will resize. And if you click one more time once you see these arrows, oh, come on. I don't know why it does this. Why it insists on keeping popping up the preferences box where I cannot find it. Like what? <laughs> it's not going to do very much right now. All of a sudden do what I just did. What on earth? How about... <laughs> We just end it there, so I can troubleshoot for next class. <laughs> so of course, as soon as I pause the recording, it decides to work. As a result, I'm going to end class for the day and do some troubleshooting so on next Monday when we have webinar, I can be a little bit more effective in this case. I do not know why it's being so confusing, but as Sam said, 98% of the time it's confusing, <laughs> which it should not be. So I will talk to you all on Monday, and have a great day.